you know, I remember as a kid, so my, my Chickasaw roots come from my father and it's through my, his mother, my grandmother. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and she was adamant that we be aware of our Chickasaw identity, even though most of my family yeah. is not very identifiable Chickasaw. Mm-hmm. Um, she was very adamant that we knew about that heritage and that it was a part of our life. And that our, our tri- I remember her whenever uh, 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 someone was born in the family, she was adamant that we yeah. were enrolled members of the Chickasaw. It wasn't enough just to be Chickasaw. Yes, you're born, you know, with the heritage that you have. Right. But, you know, tribal tribal membership is a political designation, and she made sure. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes, and we were like, "Why? What's the you know? Yeah. You know, now there's some tangible benefit to being t- Chickasaw for many people." Mm-hmm. Uh, but for her at the time, there really wasn't a tangible benefit. It was it was more of a heritage celebration. She knew yeah. that heritage, and she made sure that we, as as grandkids and kids, did. Even sometimes when we didn't, as kids, didn't we didn't see the importance of it. You know, right. you, you didn't care. And then it was amazing as I got older to recognize um, how Chickasaw values were a part of my life more than I thought. How Chickasaw. Um, um, even you know, uh, you know, diet. Some of the foods that we ate, I didn't know they were Chickasaw meals and dishes. I didn't know Darn. that they were. Tradi- I, I just thought they were my grandmother's uh, uh, deal. But but I also had a unique experience. Um, you know, when I was in law school, the, ch- the tribe was very helpful with scholarships for me. I mean, me and my wife. I mean, we couldn't have existed. We got married when I was in law school. Yeah, we yeah. couldn't have existed without the support of the tribe. I mean, it, it made a difference. And and then certainly when I was running for office, you know, a lot of the uh, I had worked at the Chickasaw Nation, and a lot of the executive team and, and management team and frontline yeah. workers were a big part of my election and supporting me. And so when I got a chance to to come work at the bank, the, the, when Governor Anatubby called me about coming to work here and we had a conversation, after I got off the phone, the thing that went through my mind more than anything was, okay, this is the first opportunity where I can actually make a contribution back to the tribe. The tribe has given so much to me and been such a part. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been such a benefactor of all of Governor Anatubby's wonderful leadership that this was like I felt like the first time where I could actually contribute something and so to me getting here and and, and focusing on the bottom line and earning uh, a a dividend and paying that dividend to the tribe or reinvesting back into the bank and growing the bank's market share you know I do it as a proud Chickasaw citizen because it it means so much more because we're actually making a contribution and oh by the way the great part about that I know that many people, sometimes that can feel exclusive because you're not a tribal member. Right. But the reality is um, all of the benefit that comes from the Chickasaw Nation financially, it mm-hmm. all gets reinvested back into the tribal government, which happens to be in a in Oklahoma. So the state benefits yeah. when the Chickasaw Nation does well. So it's an amazing uh, opportunity. But again, for me, it, it, it's more than just earning a paycheck. I mean, it really is. It's, it's like a, um, it's almost like the family business, you know? It's, yeah, it's yeah. like, I, I know that if this bank does well and we make a, con- and even though on the grand scale of things, I mean, we're, we're a small community bank, you know, compared to Windstar or right. or some of the other, you know, amazing healthcare facilities or, you know, we're a real small contributor. Mm-hmm. But my goal, honestly, my personal goal is I want this bank to be the biggest contributor. I want us to yeah. contribute a bigger dividend than Windstar. We got a long way to go. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that is my goal because I believe so much in the mission of building better lives for everyone and advancing the overall quality of life of the Chickasaw people. Yeah. Like, that's ingrained in me and, and it's a privilege to sit in this seat and, and you know, and feel like you're making a difference, right? Yeah, and then like I said, you you know, you, you go back to like, well, you know, you, you had no idea why your grandma was putting this plate in front of you yeah. and what it meant, right? And now you do, and like you're right, like having that moment, of like wow, this is the first time I actually get to give back, you know, and and a lot of people don't get that opportunity right or, or even or they might get that opportunity and it's in totally different ways it might be just by volunteering or whatever it is but it's really cool for you to just you know just hear you speak about that right it's kind of like a hair fun- on the back of your neck moment sure I, i'll tell you a funny story real quick as a kid i remember we were down 
so my great grandparents, who I got to know, they lived and they were Chickasaw. Um, they're they're allotted lands, Chickasaw lands. We are still in the family, and uh, we would go down every year. But but this was a kid. They were actually my great grandparents were still living. But I was down with my grandmother, and I remember we were walking, and they they still own. Uh, I think they had still about forty acres mm-hmm. of the hundred and sixty that they were allotted. Um, we were walking, and I remember her reaching down, and. Um, uh, picking up what I thought was grass yeah. and eating it. She just kind of wiped it off and was eating. And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I must have been like seven or eight. And I thought, grandma's losing her marbles. You know, she's like <laughs> eating grass. And, and I and I later learned that she was eating poke salad. She loved poke salad. And she loved raw vegetables. Anyway, poke salad, I don't know if you're familiar, it's a wild yeah. green. Okay. And it's a it's a it's a pretty popular Chickasaw dish uh, that my grandmother would prepare. Yeah. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't like most kids. I didn't like green vegetables. I didn't know them. I thought she was just, you know, losing her marbles and, and yeah. eating grass. Come to find out, she liked poke salad. She liked it fresh. So when we were out walking. She saw some. She wiped it off, and she would chew it and eat yeah. it and, and pick it. And uh, you know, those just kind of rare moments where you realize that was a very Chickasaw thing to do. Most most people don't walk <laughs> around eating raw poke salad, right? Yeah. Uh, but it, it comes full circle later on when I'm reading about Chickasaw culture, and I and I get yeah. the calendar that we get every year from the Chickasaw Nation, and it lists the poke salad meal. Like it took me back to that feel. Yeah with my grandmother I'm thinking that was a very Chickasaw thing right yeah yeah because at the time you're like she's going nuts yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's <laughs> she's right she's losing right. her that's mind right. that's right like, I'm gonna tell your parents like now, grandma's doing that thing again <laughs> now, now full disclosure I gotta be honest I don't really like poke salad uh, <laughs> it, it's kind of a bit but of that green. memory though yeah, it's yeah, special the memory, the memory, yeah. the memory's super yeah. special yeah. and I try I try all the Chickasaw dishes some of them you know Pashofa some others you, you just the, the grape dumplings I like yeah yeah, uh, yeah. but 